Okay. Hey, Michael Besson here, founder of the Besson Agency. Listen, that's important because right now, if you go to the BessonAgency.com and you click it, there's going to be a tab there where you can jump on my calendar invite page, which will allow you to sit down for 30 minutes and share your business challenges. This is exclusively for business owners, uh, ministry leaders, uh, people in leadership capacities, just so that you kind of understand what we're all trying to do here together. We have formed a team of C-level advisory volunteers that are in logistics, operations, finance, sales and marketing, people that have things stuck in ports that can't get it out. They've tried to um, uh, communication systems for people that now have an outbound and incredible employment force that they never had before. Here's the point trying to do our very best to bring as many things to you as possible free of charge. So if you jump onto the bestinagency.com wherever you find this video, you will find a way to get on my calendar. Now, in the meantime, the CARE Act is an amazing opportunity to help entrepreneurs, business owners, people in all walks of business get back on track. We're all in this together. There are no more Democrats or Republicans. We're all on the same team here. So here's the deal. I'm going to introduce you to Rich Boyer, CPA, founder of the, of the Gensley Group. Hello, Rich. Nice to see you. Thank you for taking Good to see you too, Michael. I, uh, I know that you're averaging, I think you just told me, a phone call every two and a half or three minutes back to back. <laughs> That's and correct. And you're answering over 125 emails that must be answered a day. Right. And, uh, you know, without further ado, I want to get to the nuts and bolts. Here's the deal. We're going to give you uh, as much intel on how to access the CARE Act as possible. Uh, Rich is not going to tell you what I'm going to tell you. Number one, we both need haircuts. These are not wigs. <laughs> That's incredibly important. <laughs> Number two, Rich, in my 28 years of coaching executives around the world, Rich is by far the sharpest finance accounting mind I've ever met. He lived, eat, and breathed the first 36 hours of the 880-page uh, CARE Act and digested it all, took notes, and of course, everything is shit. It's the government, guys. It's, gonna not, it's never going to stop shifting, right? So uh, we're going to drill through what's most important. One last thing, caractusa.com. We're throwing up this website. It's going to be the ugliest website, website we ever did. The, the top is going to be free resources, the documents, the links, and this video. So if you're down to nothing, man, we want to help. The second stage is going to be for $75 twice a week. We're going to just get in forums and try to take on as many entrepreneurs as possible, up to 20 per room, and handle your challenges. And then the third one is if you just want to hand it off to Rich and his team, he's already done over 50 of these. I don't know who's done more in the last 48 hours. And he will walk through the interactions of all the changes because Lord only knows what's going to happen with this $350 billion bail. So Rich, without uh, uh, belaboring this, the SBA has done, I mean, the uh, government's done some incredible stuff to try to get businesses back on track. You have been at the forefront of this. You have studied the 880 page document. In fact, you've read it cover to cover. I, I doubt there's. I have. That have done that. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. That's just incredible. So first and foremost, um, I want to just tag the most important things. So when when somebody sits down, they need a, a variety of documents. What are the documents that they need specifically, and where do they find them? Okay. Uh, a lot of these documents will need to be self-generated. Now, I have uh, copies of the documents that the government wants, the forms, to put the data, uh, to give the data to the government. But primarily, there is an application form. That's a very simple form that uh, gives the name of the business. It gives the tax ID number, the owners of the business, uh, and... Uh, um, a, a bank account that you can put to get the emergency ten uh, ten thousand dollar fund. And that uh, is going to be, uh, by the way, a very easy link. You won't have to look for it. I will wherever you see this video, I will put it below, and it's easy 
peasy. Now, <laughs> hello. <laughs> now, uh, let's talk about accessing the real resources that these business owners need. So you have the emergency $10,000. Anybody with a uh, ability to type can figure that out. In fact, I've helped a half dozen. Now, the secondary one is the big one. And essentially, it's two and up to two and a half times your payroll, your subcontractor's fee, your building lease, and a few other things. Yes, let's, it, it might be good to cover some definitions that are in uh, the CARE Act. Okay, go. Uh, there, there is a definition of payroll costs. And that's a very important item. Mm -hmm. Payroll costs are what is going to be covered under this act. Uh, they include um, normal uh, payment, uh, normal salaries and wages. Uh, they include severance pay. So if somebody was terminated and is receiving severance pay, that's covered under the act. Okay. Retirement benefits. Now that I'm interested in seeing some of the regulations because if you're already receiving a retirement benefit, supposedly that comes under the definition of payroll costs. Okay. Um, any health insurance, group health insurance payments that are made relative to uh, uh, to payroll, as well as there's another uh, another area that I'm, I'm kind of interested in seeing how the regulations are going to work on this, but it, it's also co uh, uh, covering any taxes that the state might impose on the employee. For example, in, in California, we have uh, SDI, which is a an additional tax that the employee pays, and supposedly that uh, would be covered under the uh, the definition of payroll costs. I believe that uh, subcontractors are covered as well, correct? Subcontractors are covered as well. The um, uh, the total uh, basically the government wants you to go twelve months prior to the time that you're applying for the loan. Mm -hmm. uh, so this means um, starting now in March all the way through. February 1st of uh, 2019, you calculate the average uh, uh, payroll costs that you had during that period. The cum by accumulation of all that the categories you just said, correct? Right, accumulation of all that. You, you total that, take a simple average of mm -hmm. those numbers, multiply that times 2.5, Mm -hmm. And that gives you the amount of advance that's going to be covered under this uh, emergency provision. Now, that, that uh, advance, just so that the audience understands, is essentially forgivable if you use it for certain things, or, or maybe I don't have that right. Yes, it, it has to be used for payroll costs. Exactly. So that, that, that same definition that we, that we used. Um, but it can also be used for interest only on any debt obligation that you might have outstanding, and it could be used for rent. Okay. So that's a very important uh, component. So if you now let's have- uh, let, Well, and I know, I know how your brain works. And, and, and guys, again, the, the site's gonna have free stuff in the middle, $75 opportunity to interact and just get a little deeper dive into this. I wanna make sure we don't lose the audience with the details here. And then if you want to go full on, and hey, we just wanna help any way we can. That's really the bottom line here. Hey, so Rich, I wanna make sure I understand this. If they pay for those categories with this advance, it is 100% forgivable? It is, there is a caveat. What's okay? the caveat? The, there's always one the, with the government. There's always caveats. Uh, the caveat is that the government wants you to not lay off people. Mm -hmm. So if you, um, start to have a layoff where you're getting rid of employees and you're stop paying um, for the benefits, um, including retirement, then there's a penalty and that forgiveness is reduced by a fraction of which the numerator is the number of employees that you have currently divided by the average number of employees that you've had from January, uh, excuse me, February 15th of uh, 2019 mm -hmm. until June 30th of 2019. Mm -hmm. So this is an important, uh, random, this is important. Random block of time, all right. <laughs> it is, it is. Okay, so, so just so I understand, um, 
it's 100% forgivable if it's matched. What about all these employers who have had to lay, lay people off? Can they get their hands on that 2.5, bring them back in? Right yes, back? exactly. And that's what the government's try to motivate people is rehire. If you start to rehire people, then the amount of that um, forgivable loan is um, is not reduced. Okay. Now, now the forgivable loan. Let me um, let me cover that. The uh, there's two aspects of the amount that's forgiven. Uh, the first aspect is the the um, if you take eight weeks of average uh, wages that you've paid, that is the first tranche that's forgivable under the loan. So if you can imagine, if you've got, um, just using simple numbers, if you have an average uh, $10,000 of, um, of wages or payroll costs, and you multiply that times two and a half, you're gonna get um, uh, uh, 22,500, uh, 2,500, excuse me, 25,000. And then that is going to be reduced by the first tranche, which if, again, if those are average earnings for one month, for eight weeks, double that. So it'll be 20000 yes. So in effect, in that illustration, you get a loan for 25000 two and a half times the 10, mm -hmm. and you subtract um, eight weeks of wages, which is mm -hmm. the first tranche, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. would be two times that same amount or 20000 then the additional amount that you add to that is what your average rent has cost over that same period. So that adds to the amount that's forgiven. Now, in no case will the forgiveness be greater than the amount that you borrowed, which means it's not, the government's not gonna give you more money because you, your forgiveness is greater than what you Got originally it. borrowed. Got it's it. limited right. to what you have originally borrowed. That makes complete sense. Now, the thing that's happening to all of us is the rules are changing a lot. So we're gonna to try to re refresh the platform as quickly as we possibly can. Rich. Uh, and, and that's a very good point. And, and um, during this time, I think we need to have a bit of patience because the government is dealing with things they've never dealt with before. No, it's, it's the SBA the is dealing with uh, things they've never dealt before, and every single financial institution is dealing with things they've never had to deal with before. So we are really taxing a a group of people and a methodology to uh, to be able to provide these funds. So a lot of it, I'm I'm looking daily, uh, actually hourly, <laughs> on uh, news updates on how to deal with, with a lot of issues. And I don't think we're gonna get a lot of these settled right away. No, I can't. So, I, I, uh, so Rich, anybody that reaches out to the bestinagency.com hits the calendar invite. Uh, I want to make sure, uh, no matter what hiccups happen with um, uh, careactusa.com, that there is a downloadable thing or a, a way for me to hand off. Now we're gonna be able to hand off to anybody all these forms, correct? And, and, and yes. right after we get done with this, can you give me the latest bucket dump of all those? And they are in total right now, four or six? There's four, uh, well, there's, let me let me cover them first. Let's go. The, the simplest one is the application form. And okay. currently this form can be prepared online. Then there is another form that is a borrower's form. Um, that gives information about yourself. You're the borrower. And it goes into a lot of detail of who you are, social security numbers, address, uh, you know, basic information. Okay. That, uh, that's a fairly simple one to fill out. The next one is they want to see the last three years of gross business activity. And this is over a period of three years and they want to see it by month. And again, very simple form to fill out. Okay. Another form is a even simpler form. It's just a request uh, that you're giving permission for the SBA to look at uh, the last uh, three years of tax returns. And there's two different forms uh, that could be used for that, but we have both of the forms, and they're 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 pretty much the same. All right. Uh, so anybody that reaches out, you will in fact get a data dump of those, the link. And I'm sure most of you have. Right. It. 
the most, most the right. most difficult form that is going to be required is a personal balance sheet of the borrower and again the borrower is uh, by definition is anybody that owns more than 20 percent of an enterprise will have to submit a personal financial statement um, what i would recommend to people uh, right now is that they start taking an assessment of their assets and a personal balance sheet would consist of uh, cash on hand that you have marketable securities furniture fixtures uh, jewelry, any any personal items, um, works of art, um, automobiles, um, cash surrender value of life insurance, uh, and those are um, uh, pretty much on the asset side. And any other collectibles that you might have, those are. Uh, and and one of the things that a lot of people forget is to try to um, come up with a value of their business. Now this is probably going to be one of the difficult parts of valuing your your balance sheet because uh, with this current economic times we have it's very difficult to value uh, going enterprises and mm -hmm. my recommendation is that we value them based on a going concern which is a um, a qualification saying we think we're gonna you know these businesses are, are going to survive and that my business will sur will survive so based on that on a going concern basis it's it should be worth x amount of dollars typically those valuations are done by looking at what you've done in the past what you've done in the future and projecting out future earnings and then using some uh discount factors uh to value your future cash flows and we do this quite often in valuation techniques uh, as to use a discounted cash flow yes we have uh, basis we've done a ton of them in the last 12 years together right hey uh and 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 then uh and then the liability side you need to start taking um account of all of your liabilities because on a separate form that the sba is going to require uh, they want just a list of liabilities that are that are currently outstanding so it's a good idea to start generating those and, and again liabilities would be credit card debt uh, loans mortgages um, uh, you know any of the personal obligations that you might have and again the um, um, uh, those are going to be the items that are going to be required for the uh, personal financial statement and again i would recommend start gathering that information yeah yeah very the quickly more prepared you are the better hey here's a couple of thoughts for everybody i mean i am um, i'm reflecting back on some of my mentors um and one of them in particular tony robbins had been through five business masteries of his three as a vp of one of his organizations and two as a, a civilian here's the thing that um i've discovered working with uh, clients all over the world for 28 years, very few people understand how to dive into numbers and metrics and analysis like you just do off the top of your head. And understanding your lane when you go to business mastery is one of the most important things you can possibly right. learn. What is your lane? Well, I'm gonna give you another one that I've learned just working with clients all over the world. We don't know what we don't know. So typically you'll have a relationship with a CPA. I didn't know that. <laughs> typically it is good to laugh right now, isn't it? Because it's just so it is. weird. I just, uh, <laughs> I, I just uh, put off a meme that says, uh, uh, you know, we all need to stop using the term. This can't get any weirder because it probably it can. Yeah. Yes. So here's the thing. Uh, um, I've discovered most entrepreneurs don't really know how to assess the quality of their legal counsel or the quality of their accounting counsel. And by the way, all of those you should go to first. We're not, we're not here to, we're just here to come alongside you and help you. Banks are doing this for free. Uh, credit unions are, there's a whole bunch of people doing this for free. Here's, here's my really important point. Very few people operate with the diligency of the, the Gensley group. And I, I know this because I plugged and played him in with more clients than I can possibly count. And to date, not one of them uh, he has not been able to find a ton of errors 
increase their tax credits or reduce their tax liability, give them strategic planning. It's pretty crazy. So all I'm saying is ask great questions. Be like Ronald Reagan. Um, assess the quality of the information you're getting. Make sure you're not going to somebody for 10 bucks an hour. It might be even better if you just buckle down and learn it yourself. So all I want to tell you is this is um, a really tough time for all of America and for all businesses. And to the best of our ability at the, uh, the best industry, what we're going to try to do is get as many C-level advisory services to you for free, no charge. And why? A couple of reasons. It's the right thing to do. We're all on the same team. And hopefully when the universe stops imploding, maybe you'll remember us. Maybe you will, maybe you won't, don't care. We're just paying it forward right now. Right. So Rich, um, aside from... I, I would like to make a comment on that. You, you mentioned uh, our former president, Ronald Reagan. Uh, one of the things that I thought was very curious going through the, uh, the CARE Act is there was one other bill that did more for the U.S. economy than I have ever seen in my career. And again, I've been a practicing CPA since 1970. That's, that's a long time. You both have more hair than we should. <laughs> and, and one of the best laws I ever saw come through Congress was called the Tax Reform Act of 1981. Oh, yeah. This was the one that Reagan had um, had pushed for, completely changed the uh, the, um, the 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 tone of taxation in the United States, and we saw one of the biggest economic booms uh, of all times. Yep. As I was reading this, I was seeing the same provisions mm -hmm. in this bill. Mm -hmm. There's one one little caveat that uh, that I was I'm I'm hoping that they're going to expand on this. Um, one of the things that they're doing is that they are extending itemized deductions, particularly charitable contributions, to an above-the-line deduction. Now, what that means is typically if, you're, uh, if you donate uh, to a nonprofit and if your total itemized deductions for a married couple, if it falls into that $25,000 limit, uh, and uh, the, you lose the deduction. However, now the under the CARE Act, you will get credit. Now they they've only made it up to three hundred dollars. I'm hoping they'll expand the credit, but um, you will be able to deduct above the line, uh, right off of income, whether you itemize or or not, a charitable contribution. So that means it sure would be nice for people to become a little bit more charitable. Um, one of the things that Reagan did in a study, which was very interesting, is he found that nonprofits generally on the whole provide more services to society than the government does. Mm. And one of the things that was very much in the, uh, the uh, 1981 Reform Act that did an, an amazing job for both nonprofits but, but for society was to give charities that that one up on uh, allowing them to get more contributions and people getting a deduction for it. Mm -hmm. So that was one thing that I found was very good in there. The other, another provision is they, um, they got rid of a lot of the onerous provisions of loss carry backs, which under the, under the, uh, uh, the new tax act um, were eliminated uh, and, and limited now they're allowing companies to go back three years and recoup taxes. And, and again, that's one thing that I'm going to be looking at very closely is if anybody has had a net operating loss from 2017, 18, or 19, that loss can now be carried back. Oh, it's beautiful. Excellent. It's Absolutely. a great way of getting additional cash. This is what I love about you. I could give you guys stories forever. I mean, I, I'm going to leave you with one really big one. We were, and I don't even know if you remember this one, right? But we were in a um, huge uh, education building, and uh, one of the multi-billionaire uh, owners, I'm in Las Vegas, uh, of a casino, his accountant was in the room, and uh, he briefly started talking about accounting strategies, and you just very, as you always do, very humbly brought up a couple of points, and he was rather arrogant at first, 
and then you brought up international law and things that were specific to a casino and i think it had something to do with the isle of man or something in england if memory serves correct and i i saw this multi-billionaire's accountant suddenly realize you knew more and that's happened everywhere i go so so listen uh I love having brainiacs around me, and and listen, uh, on on uh, we're going to do this Tuesdays and Thursdays for seventy five dollars a head. You come into this room. If there's one of you, you're going to get both of us <laughs> for that. Here's what we just want to do. We want to figure out a way to help everybody. The top of the site's all free. You contact me. You're going to get the documents, the links, anything we can do. I am also availing myself for thirty minutes uh, uh, sessions. By the way. Um, uh, it's just a small little note to the self. Rich and I are both faith-based people. If you're a ministry leader, if you are a nonprofit organization, um, Rich and I love to help in any way we can. And I'm talking to, uh, I don't I haven't asked you this question, Rich. I'm talking to ministry leaders all over the planet. Are you as well? Is there, uh, <laughs> yeah. Remember I said I'm getting yeah. uh, a phone call every three minutes? <laughs> Yes, I'm getting a lot of uh, response from faith-based um, oh. groups, and I've already, I've already, uh, I think eight or nine of my uh, SBA applications have already been with some very large nonprofits. Mm. Uh, and again, the thing that's really nice is um, uh, we haven't mentioned this, but the fact that the um, uh, some of these provisions are for self-employed individuals. Yes, they are. And that is a very, uh, no, I mean, I've never problems. seen anything like that before. Yeah. And I think there's going to be a lot of benefits there. Well, love him or hate him, we have a person in the White House that knows business. And he's trying like heck to save America. And mm -hmm. uh, I just think partisanship is just out the window right now. We're all on one team. Right. And God bless America for that. So listen, you know how to get a hold of us on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Go to bestinagency.com, jump on my calendar. I will connect you with Rich. We're going to get the site up as fast as we can. And with God's grace and God's help, we are all going to have a normal life once again in between here and That's there. for sure. And I think a better life. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, I just want to touch on one extra point before we, we uh, close here. Uh, one of the things that I liked reading in the bill is all of these advantages that they're trying to get for uh, telemedicine mm -hmm. and to change how we look at health care. I think we're going to see some excellent, excellent things. Fast tracking of, of uh, drug, drug protocols. Um, um, uh, much more additional capital in beefing up our health care. So those those are areas that I think can only benefit all Americans. Yeah. And uh, and even around the world, I'm 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 excited to see those changes come about. And you know, we're all even though we're isolated, we're all connecting at a much deeper way because now we're realizing somewhere down deep in our souls what's really important. What we thought was important wasn't. What is That's for sure. My friends, God, country, man. I don't know what else could be more important in life right now. So, uh, hey, God bless you guys. Uh, we really want to help where we can. We do. And uh, uh, prayerfully, uh, just know. I want to. I want to tell you guys that we are prayerfully covering everybody that interacts with us. Because, yes. okay. God bless. God bless you.